what is happening everybody justin bridgewater's finest on youtube blockbuster underscore guy on twitter and welcome to week nine of my weekly nfl pick show for the 2013 2014 nfl season now i'm not gonna lie week eight was very successful for me i know it was successful for a lot of other youtubers as well but at the same time i'm still upset i'm still not happy because against the spread and over under i'm still struggling i, I still gotta own those struggles but at the same time i just Quite frankly, they're starting to piss me off a little bit, and I'd be surprised if you weren't pissed off as well. So let's take a look there. Week 8 in the top 2, the against the spread and over-under. I was 1-1 one one against the spread, 1-1 one one over-under. Uh, against the spread, I told you to take New Orleans minus 12.5. That worked out. I told you to take Washington plus 13. They couldn't keep it close enough, so that didn't work. Over-under, I told you to take Denver and Washington to go over 57. That did work out. But I told you to take over 42 in St. Louis and Seattle. That ended up being a defensive struggle. I should have seen that, so that didn't work out. 1-1, one and one, one one and one on each of them, two and two on the week, seven and nine and seven and nine both sides, fourteen and eighteen on the season. You guys don't come to these videos for seven and nine. You don't come to these videos for fourteen and eighteen. You come to these videos for quality and consistent picks. And so far, over under and against the spread, I haven't been giving that to you. So if you're not pissed off yet, I'm pissed off on your behalf. I'm taking ownership of the struggles, but the struggles are still there. And at this point in the season, they shouldn't still be there. So this is my challenge to myself, and this is my pledge to you. For the rest of the season, I'm going to be at 66%. And if I don't meet that, if I don't meet that requirement, if I don't satisfy that in your eyes, I expect to hear from you about it. That's my challenge to myself. That's my dedication to you. If I can go two out of three for every pick for the rest of the season, maybe by the end of the year it might end up with not a half bad number, but it starts this week. No more sticking with one-on-one. -on -one. We're going to start killing it here on the top two. Let's take a look at the platinum, gold, silver, and bronze picks from week eight. See how those worked out? I ran the table on those suckers. 4-0 and oh this week. Bronze pick, I told you to take KC over Cleveland. That worked out 23-17. to 17. Alex Smith kind of answered my criticisms of him from the last video. And Jason Campbell coming out of nowhere as like the third stringer, I think, for the Browns. Fourth stringer by this point. Who knows? Jason Campbell really impressed in kind of a spot start here. Cleveland still doesn't know what the hell's going on at quarterback. Still relatively close. I mean, single possession could have ended it, but KC runs their record to still undefeated at 9-0. and Silver pick, I told you to take the pack over the Minnesota Vikings in a tight divisional game. That worked out 44-31. to Cordell Patterson ties an NFL record for longest play at 109 yards on a kick return. Very, very impressive. Aaron Rodgers, something I just wanted to point out. Everybody knows how good Aaron Rodgers is, but he had a 66% completion percentage or better for the fourth game of their seven games this year. So more than half the games this year, he's completing more than two-thirds of his pass attempts. That, to me, is phenomenal. He's been up over 80% twice this season. Very, very impressive. Gold pick, told you to take the Broncos over the Redskins. That worked out 45-21. to 21. Redskins weren't able to keep it close enough down the stretch for that plus 13 to work out, but that's okay. Denver scores 38 unanswered points in this game after trailing 21 to 7 which was made that plus 13 look like I was a genius really when Washington went up 21 to 7 after throwing 20 straight touchdown passes Peyton Manning has interceptions in four straight games including this game against Washington where he threw three so he's got six interceptions in his last four games might be a little something to worry about if you're a Broncos fan probably not and the platinum pick, I told you to take the Saints over the Buffalo Bills. They doubled them up a little better than doubled them up, 35-17. to 17. Five touchdown passes from Drew Brees, who now has 19 on the season. The Saints defense, which I feel has played above expectations this year, generates three turnovers 
from Thad Lewis at the quarterback position for uh, Buffalo, and the teams combine for eight sacks. So even though it was a 35 to 17 game, the defenses really on both of these teams were up there making plays. New Orleans, New Orleans always going to put up their points. Buffalo just wasn't able to stop them. So platinum, gold, silver, and bronze got them all. Had a 4-0 week. Straight up in week eight, as I said, had a phenomenal week. 11 and two with my straight up picks in week eight. The only two that I missed were the Falcons and the Eagles, both losing winnable games that really they probably should have won. But, you know, it happens. It is what it is. 11 and two, straight up fantastic mark for me. 75 and 45 on the year, which is a far cry better than I was doing last year. Last year, this is when I really started hitting my hot streak, so hopefully this has started now. It's going to continue on through the rest of the season. So 75 up, 45 down in the 77th percentile on Yahoo. In the private Pick'em League, I am in third place still out of now 23. You'll notice that that kind of dropped back down there. We had a couple people who created duplicate accounts because they forgot passwords, so I'm still trying to weed all them out, so that number is likely to go down again. But currently sitting in third place out of right now 23, 675 of 964 possible confidence points, a clip of 70%. In week 8, picked up 85 of 91 possible confidence points, a great week. 93% was not good enough to win the week. Shout out to Holly Gordon, Patriots or nothing, for winning our week. Had an identical 11-2 and two record to me, but was a little better with her confidence points. 88 of 91. 88 of 91. That's a great mark. 97% on the possible confidence points for the week. Too Easy remains our overall leader, however. 79 and 41, so four up, four down from what I am right now. 696 of 964 possible confidence points for a season clip of 72%. The top five, really, in the league are still very, very close. One or two good weeks is all that separates them. We're about a bit past the halfway point now, but this is still anybody's game, folks. So congratulations to Patriots or Nothing for winning Week 8 and for 2EZ for remaining the overall leader. All right, enough of the past. Let's look to the future. Week 9 picks, let's get them going. And it starts now with the top two against the spread and over-under. We will start over-under one more time. We're going to start in the New England-Pittsburgh game. The number here is 44 points. Pittsburgh's defense is starting to come around a little bit, and New England still looks like they're struggling on offense. Even though they've got Gronk back, they still don't seem like they're perfectly in tune, you know what I mean? They're not putting up the points like we would expect a New England team to do, and it makes sense. Young, inexperienced receivers who are talented, but again, inexperienced. And Pittsburgh has just had their offensive struggles really all year. So, while 44 is a manageable number, in this particular game, with Pittsburgh's defense playing better in the last couple of games, I don't see this number going over 44, and it seems like most of the experts don't see that either. In New England, Pittsburgh, I'm going to tell you to take under that mark of 44 points. And my second favorite over-under play this week comes in the Chicago at Green Bay game. Number here is 49 and a half. Chicago's defense, not what it used to be. There's no Brian Urlacher on this team anymore. They got a couple of injuries. Chicago is not stopping teams the way we're accustomed to seeing them stop teams. Chicago's offense has been quite good this year. Mark Tressman still doing some good things in Chicago offensively. Green Bay at home is an offensive juggernaut. It doesn't matter who's playing for them at wide receiver. You've got one of the great quarterbacks in the league in Aaron Rodgers, and you've got weapons. There's still weapons there, even though they don't have Jermichael Finley, even though they don't have James Jones, even though they don't have Greg Jennings anymore. There's injuries on there. Don't matter. 49 and a half. It's going over because Chicago can't seem to stop anybody. Green Bay's defense has been suspect for a couple of years. So 49 and a half, take the over in Chicago at Green Bay. Now let's go against the spread. My favorite ATS play this week comes in the KC at Buffalo game. The number here, Buffalo is a three-point dog at home. Buffalo just came off of getting wiped out by New Orleans last week, as we mentioned. That was my platinum pick. And Kansas City, of course, had a hard-fought victory over Cleveland. Now, Kansas City, again, Kansas City's still undefeated. Buffalo 
is not a good football team. And I don't want to blame anything on Thad Lewis, but until they get a quarterback that shows consistent play, because Thad Lewis has had good plays, and then he's had bad plays. And really, until the team starts really picking it up, just as a as an entire unit, I don't know how you could take anything but Kansas City minus three. I mean, Kansas City, it's only three points. You got an undefeated team on this side. You got Buffalo, who I believe now is three and five. The game is in Buffalo, but I don't think that's going to make a big lick of difference here. Kansas City wins this game on the road to stay undefeated. Who would have thought KC would be a 10-0 team? So in KC at Buffalo, take KC minus three. And my second favorite against the spread play this week comes in the Pittsburgh at New England game, which we talked about in the over-under. Now the number here is New England minus seven, favored by a touchdown at home. How? I don't, I, this, this line I don't understand. They're not scoring, like, they're, well, I mean, they're scoring, but they're not scoring as much. They're not, this is not the New England Patriots of 2007. This isn't even the New England Patriots of last year. Plus, you have Pittsburgh, like I said, their defense has been playing better here in the last couple of games. I think minus seven is too many. I think New England wins the game. But I don't think they win the game by a touchdown. So in Pittsburgh at New England, I'm taking the dog there. I'm going to take Pittsburgh plus seven. Now we'll take a look at the platinum, gold, silver, and bronze picks for week nine in the NFL. We're going to start with the bronze pick, of course. I am six and two on the bronze pick this season. My bronze pick, the St. Louis Rams playing at home to the Tennessee Titans. Uh, Titans haven't played very well on the road this year, and St. Louis just got off of... A game at home where they held one of the elite teams in football, held them to a very close game. So St. Louis really came. Color me impressed. Color me impressed that they were able to hold Seattle to a low point total, keep that game close, keep that game within a single play in order to win it. I think if you run that final goal line series for St. Louis a hundred more times, 95 times they put it into the end zone. It was all world bad play calling. They're staying at home against a Tennessee team that I still think is overrated. They got a good defense. This is going to be a low scoring game, but I like St. Louis at home. So in Tennessee at St. Louis, I'm taking St. Louis for the bronze pick. Silver pick, we got the New Orleans Saints on the road traveling to New York to take on the Jets. New Orleans is just, they're just, they're looking damn good right now. And now that the injury situation with Jimmy Graham seems to be not as serious as a lot of people said it was, I don't see the Jets stopping them. And I think New Orleans defense is playing well enough that I don't see Geno Smith doing a hell of a lot in this game either. In New York Jets versus New Orleans, I'm taking New Orleans on the road as my silver pick. I'm 6-2 and two with the silver pick this year, looking to make it 7. We'll go to the gold pick where I am 7-1 and one on the year, and I'm looking at the Dallas Cowboys playing at home against the Minnesota Vikings. I feel bad that I'm kind of picking on Geo's Vikings. Dallas, I think, is going to be able to put up a lot of points on Minnesota. Now, Minnesota is going to be able to put up their points on Dallas, too. Does Dallas's run D keep Adrian Peterson out of the end zone, much less keep him out of the end zone twice? I don't know. I don't think so, personally. Maybe they do. Who knows? Having DeMarcus Ware back in the lineup would certainly help that. Des Bryant got in the end zone twice last week, even though he had his antics on the sidelines. But aside from that, I think Dallas has got too much here in terms of offense. The game's going to go over, I think. But in Minnesota at Dallas, taking Dallas for the gold pick. And the platinum pick. The platinum pick is the Kansas City Chiefs of the football prognosticating world. 8-0 and on the platinum pick this year. And for the platinum pick, I'm taking in the Seattle versus Tampa Bay game. Seattle's playing at home. That's all I need to say. Seattle rolls over the hapless Tampa Bay Bucks. I can't remember what the over-under is in this game. I would take it just with Seattle. I think Seattle's going to go over on their own. Seattle versus Tampa Bay taking Seattle for the platinum pick. And now here's the rest of your picks for week nine in the National Football League.
a week nine show for you folks. Comments, hate, and love, you know where they go. Comments section below. Wanted to give you a little bit of a fantasy football update as Sean P. from Team Take'em demanded that I do this week. You're so demanding, sir. Fantasy football update. Again, I'm in three leagues on Yahoo and the YouTube Prognosticators League. We'll start with the Yahoo Leagues. Five and three in one of my Yahoo Leagues, a league that I've been in for a couple of years. Five and three sitting in third place out of ten. Have a matchup this week against a team called Vulcan Spocktopus, which I think is a fantastic team name. Uh, another league just started in this league this year, 14-team league. That was the league that I was battling for first place there two weeks ago. I did win that game, unfortunately dropped a game just uh, this past week. So I'm 7-1 in that league, sitting in second place out of 14. My league, my commissioned league, I'm also 7-1. and one. I'm leading that league, have a winnable matchup this week. But most importantly, let's go to the YouTube Prognosticators League, where I am on a three-game winning streak. Five and three. Pulled my season out of the gutter with Phillip Rivers at quarterback. I don't know how. This is, of course, the league where I missed the draft. But a three-game win streak. I'm now tied for first place in my division. And this week is a battle for first place between myself and the hat box kid. And I can't wait for this game. Going to be a tight game. I cannot wait to show up hat box kid and take the lead in this division. That's it for this week. Justin, Bridgewater's Finest on YouTube, Blockbuster underscore guy on Twitter. Let me know what your picks are. Apparently no one cares about the Pro Bowl, so I'm probably not going to do any Pro Bowl videos this year. We'll see ya for week 10.